Hi all, I've made a couple of changes now just, just recently to the Chaspel puzzle system. You can set the timer. So if we, there's a timer button, if you click timer, you can see you can set the timer. So at the moment, uh, instead of using the default, I'll use 20 minutes per puzzle to make it more, more casual. There's also uh, an analysis board option, which, um, which uh, if we click analysis board and click start, you'll see actually there's a new button uh, which Hello. you can use analysis board, which will pop up an analysis board and you can sort of move around with the pieces uh, to analyze. Uh, and in fact, you can do multiple moves as well. There's an option there to do multiple moves. Uh, so with null moves. Uh, so that's interesting. If you've ever like been struggling with puzzles, you can use this new analysis board option. So there's two new buttons, timer and analysis board, uh, which um, are available. Okay, so this puzzle, uh, we still got loads of time left. And it's three and a half out of five. So uh, let's have a look. Tactical vulnerabilities. It looks as though black has, well, first of all, I don't think it's a loose piece scenario. I don't, I don't think, apart from, the, there's, a, there's an unprotected piece on, on C3. In terms of tactical vulnerabilities, uh, the dark squares, the king hasn't got that many escape squares. Uh, and then if we look at our tactical vulnerabilities, our king's pretty safe here. So I don't think it's total emergency, but it's nice to use forcing moves, especially since the king, you know, the escape squares of the king, it's, it's pretty uh, already nearly checkmated, right for checkmating. So I'm wondering if there's something really super duper here uh, to do. So this looks like a very, very dangerous position. Now, if we start uh, our search by looking at uh, forcing moves here, what are good forcing moves? Knight g4 threatens a mate in one, and actually that's useful because it also hits the rook on d5, but that rook is protected by the knight. So actually, after knight g4, maybe just bishop takes g4, and I'm not sure much has been uh, accomplished. Another forcing move one might consider is f3. I'm not entirely sure what that does though. Say rook takes e3 is possible then. And it doesn't look that uh, clear cut actually. So yeah, this is an interesting uh, scenario. One thing which is sort of striking though is if we look at this forcing move again we see that on 9g4 if hg then queen h4 would be checkmate so it's unfortunate that bishop takes g4 that we haven't got uh, another forcing move there uh, uh, for example well yeah to sort of open up the h file but it, it yeah it looks as though that kind of theme is evident though if we can only somehow get something to play a check on the h file here because of that escape square being covered so how would we uh, like arrange that we could consider uh, a deflection of this rook away rook takes d6 so if rook takes d6 that does mean now perhaps that knight g4 is more interesting but again bishop takes we're not achieving anything because queen takes pawn takes that pawn is stopping rook h5 so that's fascinating. It's it's kind of fascinating anyway. Um, so okay, this 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 could be tricky. This could be tricky. Let's see what we could do though on that same theme is perhaps try and pin the bishop in advance so that bishop g4 is not possible. So I think we're picking up some ingredients here by analyzing a combination of analyzing the position and trying to sort of find tactical vulnerabilities. But I think some extra ingredients for what would be effective is arising here. We can see that if that bishop wasn't able, uh, you know, to take on h5, or this rook wasn't able to take on h5, if these two guys were knocked out, we'd be onto something here. And I'm wondering, what about if we did play, uh, okay, okay. So that's what I'm wondering about. If we could take away these guys. 
Let's have a look at knight g4 again. Bishop takes that really is a snag, isn't it? Hmm. F3. Let's imagine bishop takes optimistically. Yeah, but we, we also, yeah, we have rook takes e3 there. Wow. Okay. You know what? I'm thinking f3 again. We have to disprove rook takes e3. Let's see. f takes, queen takes, maybe. Does queen takes e3 disproves that? If that's the case, f3 might be a promising move. If we take, then we, if white takes, then we've also got the possibility of the queen wasn't defending g1 to play queen g1 mate. Actually, in that position, just rook h5 uh, would threaten rook takes h3. That actually seems crushing. Yeah, f3, g takes, rook h5 teams crushing. So if we if we imagine then bishop takes f3 is the option, then here, wow, well, then there, yes. Interestingly, after bishop takes f3, don't we have knight g4? Because the bishop's pinned to the queen. And if pawn takes, we have queen h4 checkmate. So actually, I think we're so this struggle to make this idea on the H file work. We say I think we've had a a breakthrough. Uh, it's kind of been in, in iterative this, but I think there's been a breakthrough understanding of F three here. That actually, after Bishop takes, there's Knight G four, exploiting that pin, threatening a mate there. There's no Queen G one because of that Bishop. So H G there's actually Queen H four checkmate. And bishop takes, we just take the queen. So I believe now f3 is a strong move. What was originally discouraging was the kind of weakness of the last move, basically, that rook takes e3. But if you consider f takes, there's actually not too many options there. Queen takes, and then queen takes. I believe that's dangerous. So I think we should kick off proceedings now with f3. Right. So that is the move which was originally off putting to this whole thing. I don't think there's that many. Wait, wait, we can do better. We can do better. We've just blocked this bishop here. Can we do better with knight g4? You know what? Knight g4 is still dangerous here. It threatens mate. That's really interesting. That really is interesting. It is a very, very forcing move, threatening mate. If HG check King G1, we've got F2 check there, winning the queen. So yeah, knight G4 here seems exceptionally interesting. On queen G1. This this is probably a snag, right? But maybe on Queen G one we have Knight F two check. That wins the Queen. Yeah, I'm wondering instead of playing F G, this is a major improvement, isn't it? Knight G four. Yeah, for the reason of H G Queen check, King G one F two. Leaving only queen takes f2, and then actually we pick up the rook after. So knight g4 seems actually a crushing idea. And queen queen g1 though is possible. Yes, queen g1. In that case, hmm. In that case. As, as I mentioned, knight f2. Let's not forget the analysis. Knight f2. So yeah, knight, knight g4. Yeah, just I think knight g4. Yeah, that was that was it. That that was pretty iterative. This understand gain trying to gain this understanding of the position. You know, just just through trying to identify tactical liabilities, forcing moves, seeing what they do. 
seeing what we need to do, seeing how we can break through to do that. And sometimes there there is a a breakthrough concept. Uh, I think one of the breakthrough concepts was the idea that we could use Queen H4 check on HG. We don't have to use a Rook H5. That was one of the a, a few breakthrough concepts demonstrated here. Well, I hope you got something from that. And uh, maybe enjoy these new options. If you were struggling with puzzles before, you can extend the timer with the timer button or the analysis board uh, uh, thing. Uh, let me let me just show you that on a on a scene here. Uh, on the wider wider scene, I'll just show you these extra buttons here at the top. So timer and analysis board you can have on and off. So these two, if you want to experiment with at chess mold, hope you enjoy that. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.